Hey everybody, good morning. It's a great day for America. Not such a great day for the 14. <laughs> She's in a hole. Heck, I got these tires off the ground. Man, this is soft. Ah, uh, Jake's bringing a cable over. We're gonna hook onto the rippers. Pull her out with the nine. So have you ever wondered what the useful fuel capacity was, the usable, I mean, on a piece of equipment? How do you figure that out? So that's a 100 gallon tank on a 14G. I think it's 100, or is it 90? I don't know, I think one or the other. So anyway, <laughs> I was, uh, let's see, 12 gallons away from 100 gallons. So that's how you tell, run it out of fuel. Sidewall is gone. So Matt's uh, sidewall on his left rear blew out last night and uh, my PP won't pull it off. That's pocket puller. My pocket puller won't fit on the inside to get it off. So he called the tire guy. Ooh, zero visibility today. She's foggy. Got a bunch of stuff to go in the box today. But I can't make it work unless I clean the frost off the magnet won't stick. <laughs> There we go. Mr. Griffey just got out of bed. Didn't you, Mr. Griffey? <laughs> uh, you a good dog today? Are you a good dog? Gonna be a good dog today? Huh? Good dogs? Gonna be good dogs? Yeah. So I got a bunch of stuff going out today. Some of it I'm hesitant to say who it's for because a lot of it's, I think, Christmas gifts. So I know this one isn't. Old Dennis Ryan he lives on Unicorn Way in Highland. <laughs> I thought that was funny, Dennis. Uh, I got one going to my buddy down to Western State, Sean Haney. Gary Davis, Franklin, North Carolina. Got a big old shirt coming to him. Nolan Mallory, Susanville, California. Caleb Caravonen, Battleground, Washington. Ivan Pele, St. Louis, Missouri. George Morey, Sylvester, Georgia. Ken Harrison, Atwater, California. David Razor, Grand Island, New York. Blaine Keese. Blaine got married, so he's got something special coming to him. Tammy made you some cool stuff there. Hope you enjoy it. Robert Stratton, Santa Ana, California. And, okay, that's a lady. So somebody in Martinsburg, West Virginia is getting some Christmas. <laughs> um... So anyway, I just wanted to mention to you, double check your sh the shipping address before you order. I've had several guys now that had it sent to the wrong address. And so now i got to wait for it to come back and then change that. And yes, they did email me shortly after. But unfortunately, I spent two hours last night going through my emails that I get. Two hours. I just don't have time for all that. I mean, I, I do read them all, but as you know, I can't spend two hours after I go ship stuff out to make sure everybody got their address right. So I got to wait for it to come back, then ship him another one. If it doesn't come back, then I'll just ship him another one. But Oh, and you don't have to use PayPal either. When you check out, just click on the PayPal button. It'll take you to an area. Or you can use a credit card or whatever. You don't have to use PayPal. You guys have an awesome day. Mr. Griff, he's going to lick himself or eat grass. What you doing, Mr. Griff? So Matt had a used tire. He had local tire output put on. And of course they screwed it up. The guy didn't put any lube on the inside bead. And ripped the bead. And it went flat a couple days later so they had to come out and put some gum rubber and whatever on it and reassemble it 
So hopefully it's holding there today. I better stop and tell him he needs to put his lights on so he doesn't collide with somebody. <laughs> anyway, that tire is smaller than the other one, so it uh, loads on one side pretty bad on the left there. He's got to get a couple new tires. seems to be holding there <laughs> he's got to he got to get a couple tires before he can't find them or they cost an arm and a leg but this local outfit that does tires that's why I haven't been back to him for five or six years matter of fact it's been so long they said I don't have an account anymore it's inactive uh, but I don't care because everything they did for me ever the patches fell off they just they do crappy work um, I could go on for some time on how to fix tires correctly. Of course, you know me. I got to do everything right. I'm a weirdo. But guess what? It works. And if you go looking on the internet how to fix tires properly, they'll tell you to do it the same way I'm doing it. You use uh, some liquid buffer after you uh, buff the tire and clean it up you put some of this liquid buffer on a shop towel and run over the surface cleans all the oil and grease and residue off and then you put the cement on and you let it dry you don't set it on fire then you put your patch on stitch it on and you're good to go no no worries but I get, you know, when you put a tire on, you always lube the beads. Always, especially on an OTR tire. Always lube the beads. You don't put them on dry. Uh, or it'll be guaranteed to damage the beads. So anyway, that's why I don't use them. I got the cat going. Keel dozers warmed up, ready to go. I gotta go dig up a big chunk of concrete I found the other day with a grater stopped me dead so there's the chunk of concrete they dug around it with a backhoe and they still couldn't break it loose so let's see what the D9er will do to it
Okay, uh, Matt's going to pick up this road here, and he's going to run it down along there and all the way down around to that pivot point there down there. So, I had to get rid of that tree because I had it, it put a terrible jog in the road, then fill up that wash down there and doze that fence in so we can get across that so we can have another big job. My work here is done. Matt's picking up all these gravel roads that used to grow, go through these fields and we're building roads around the perimeter. So what he does, they got three quarter crushed gravel on them. So what he does is he opens up a section and he gets down to the uh, course pit run. And he puts that on and then he goes back and picks up the three quarter top coats it with a three quarter to try to save as much of the crushed gravel as we can and since he's doing it with a 613 it's pretty narrow so then I, I got to come in and grade it out a little wider and smooth it up for him so that uh, he can haul the mail right here we'll go clear to the end we'll show you he's probably got about a half a mile of road to build here 11 yards at a time so a lot of guys were asking what all the levers in the cat were for there isn't very many levers in the cat compared to this <coughs> so these two outside levers uh, this is my left lift cylinder, this is my right lift cylinder. Ripper, uh, blade tip control, that controls how much uh, pitch I can put on the blade. Side shift, moldboard slide, circle turn, side shift, uh, excuse me, wheelie, this is wheelie, sorry. When you run a grader forever, see these have little white things on there to tell you what they're for, but they're all wore off. But after you run a grader long enough, uh, you, you just know where to put your hands to make things work. And so, for me to tell you exactly which one's which, <laughs> I can't. <coughs> so if I want to lean the wheels, that's this one. If I want to turn the circle, that's this one. If I want to slide it, that's this one. Uh, let's see, this is going to be the side shift, which shifts the whole draw bar. So when I'm all done with this, I just try to get these roads about 14 wide which is the width of the blade on this machine. I probably told you this before, but a 14G, any 14, 14G, 14H, 14M, if it has the big rubber, which this one does, the 20.5 by 25 rubber, you need a 16 foot mold board because the 14 is the standard, the 14 mold board is the standard mold board for a 14 blade, but the standard rubber is 1825 or 1824, I can't remember, which is a way narrower tire. So the problem you run into with the big rubber and the 14 blade is when you cock the blade, you can't get it out past the wheels. So you have to side shift. You need that extra two feet of mold board because of that big rubber. And it's a big enough machine to handle a 16 foot mold board. So why do I have a 14 mold board on a 14 with big rubber? Uh, I got this blade from Brown Brothers down in Lowell, Utah. And they bought a new 14G 
I think it was a G at the time. And it had the standard 1800 rubber. So it had a 14 mold board. Well, this one originally had a 16 foot mold board. And they loved the 16 foot mold board so much, they took the old mold board off of this one, put it on the new grader, put the brand new 14 wide mold board on this one, <laughs> and then sold it. <laughs> sold it to me. So that's how it ended up with a 14 mold board. Now for doing this kind of stuff, it's awesome. But, and then like the BLM roads where we only had to go 14 wide on the roads that were good for that. But I'd still like to have a 16 foot mold board for it. Because when you're, you know, you're like you're doing a runway, uh, subdivision roads, stuff like that, it comes in pretty handy. Anyway, Matt, Matt ran into some really big cobble rock. And the other day, he got a big cobble rock in the paddle somewhere. Anyway, it sheared the rock in two and sent it flying in the air. And it came up inside the canopy on the scraper, bounced off and hit him in the side of the face. It was a rock that big. So he's finally out of that big cobble rock. He's into some better material now. comes up behind me again on another road. He'll just have to go around me. But anything I can do to smooth it up for him, make it wider, uh, allows him to pick up another gear and haul the mail. There he goes. blade I put my hands on the levers like this and you're using the other levers and the palms of your hands to adjust your uh, hydraulic. Uh, I've seen guys do this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Eh? That one's, you just don't get the feel like that. You've got to use these. To, uh, you're kind of prying with the, the outside palm of your hand. You get a good feel for it, and uh, I guess that's why I like the old, these old style graders. I've never had a chance to run an M series, and I know that M series that that contractor had out on that government job. The cat tech was there constantly, constantly. Uh, one day there's some big unit up there up on the uh, gooseneck some electronic module that runs everything and it went to pot and they had to replace it it was like three thousand five thousand dollars and if those electronic controls cost that much is it really worth it these don't cost hardly anything uh, these hydraulic valves that all these levers look to, they last forever. This grader is a 1978. Uh, we resealed those valves once, just put new O-rings in them. You're never going to wear them out. I don't know, for those of you that run an M-Series, uh, I mean, I've talked to guys that said their wrists and their hands hurt all day long from being down here controlling all that. Whereas the old graders, you're up here, you're doing this, you're shifting, you're moving your hands around. So for those of you that run the M series, do you find that it, it bothers your hands, that you get sore wrists? So all that stuff is supposed to be more ergonomic, but I think you may like it as a young man, everything works. But if you run one of those your whole life, when you get older, are you going to have carpal tunnel? Are you going to have arthritis in your wrist? I don't know. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to have expensive electronics just to have them? Uh, I suppose the reason for the joysticks is you don't have to do this. Uh, 
again, is it, is it really worth it? I don't know. So let me get you put up here where you can see this road. So way, way down there is a white gate. That's where I started and came up here. And Matt has, uh, he's already built a road around here to that pivot point. And then the road goes all the way around through those trees, around those trees and all the way oh good lord it goes way down there along that high field and comes back around that other side he's probably built miles and miles of roads out here picked up picked up the old roads and moved them over here so this is the main channel of the snake river during high water it'll run over there through channels um years ago it went over that bank during the 97 flood and washed all that out and if you go back to a video I think called go for guts and some of those in that area uh, we had the FW down here for those of you that know what that means <laughs> and uh, we raised that bank all up uh, I did come in in 98 with the cat and pushed all the gravel it washed out in his field. Pushed it back up and got it dammed off. Anyway, they've, I think the Army Corps of Engineers rip-wrapped this whole thing through here. And then up at that white gate, they stopped. Anyway, the river is trying to come around the rip-wrap there. It's washing the bank pretty bad. So, <laughs> there's the gate. You can see how much ground they've lost in here. So it's trying to come in around behind the rocks. Once these rocks are gone in a good high water year, she'll come around behind it, just eat all this away. So somehow this has got to get a barb in it, push it back over that way. There's another channel way up there. It's probably high and dry and that's where it used to go it no longer goes there so that's how much power the river has that's why they call it the snake river okay so i don't know how much you can see but i'll drive you back up around here so this is the end of where he'll stop with his gravel here on this and then he's got some other roads he'll have to go up around the corner here to the pivot point and then he's got to continue along the river down to where I showed you where that uh, riprap ends uh, so he can be able to travel around here to run the pivots and check up on things so Matt is right here he's probably got another quarter mile left to finish this <coughs> I don't know if you can see but he's way up there <laughs> so you can see the crushed gravel through here. The guy that had this before, he really spent a lot of money bringing in crushed gravel to put on all these roads. So crushed gravel's gone up to about seven bucks a ton now. Um, so we're trying to save all of it that we can. pressure PD ain't washed the bearings out yet <laughs> still going running good
So, why aren't we using the Wabco? Well, because it's too big and heavy to be driving over these freshly backfilled main lines. And the left front shock tower is kaput. Well, the Tonka truck made it two months and finally gave up the ghost. <laughs> you can see she's listing pretty hard to the left here. The front shock tower has lost its oil and nitrogen and collapsed. So the boys have got to fix that now. The seals have gone out on it. The nitrogen's all leaked out. Uh, it lasted till we were done with this job. So we just brought Petey out for this operation. So what we're doing here is Jake's taking some material they cleaned out of the canal and piled it on the bank, putting it in Petey, backing up here and dumping it because they got to have a road up here and we got to backfill into here so that you can get the screens and pull them out, put them in a truck and haul them off and clean them. So this is one of the last projects we're going to do and then excavator of the cat and the haul truck are done. So there's your screen right there. That's what she looks like. So these are the boxes I help them set. And uh, I've got a screen down there as the water comes in. It's got an electric motor on it, it rotates. got a belt on it so anyway I think with a lot of them they come off up there off the pump and they'll have a a deal that sprays on this it just keeps the junk off of it and going down the ditch and then for the fine particles I'll show you what they got that for that so these are screens right here and you got an inlet pressure and an outlet pressure so you can tell when they're plugged. So you take these out and you take them down and you take a pressure washer to them. Clean them off because this are low pressure nozzles. It doesn't take much to plug them up. So super fine pieces of weeds and junk. You'll be out there screwing nozzles off, cleaning them out. So that's what those are, screens. Okay, so this is their access. They'll be able to come up here with a pickup and park and then pull those screens out, put them in the back. I don't know how often you have to clean them. I would think with those rotating screens in front of the box, he wouldn't have to do it hardly at all, but I guess we'll find out when he gets irrigated next year. It'll be interesting to see how much stuff comes in there. So I got the low boy here. Jake's walking over the 336. We're moving that out to another job. Got to come back for the D9. Uh, we're done on this project finally. Uh, the 14 will stay here for a while until Matt, he's way over there. He's still picking up roads and moving them. Uh, Wabco's got to get out of here, but we're on to some more stuff as long as the weather will hold out. Been pretty nice this week. A little overcast and chilly today, but um, we got some scraper work to do excavator work and I forget some of the other stuff I got a list I'm after two months I'm kind of way behind hey tip of the day this is why you always want to let your grater warm up really good and the hydraulics warm up because when it's cold it'll peel the chrome right off the rod see this yep that's ruined way to go Jeff